In this video, we're going to be creating a simple chat client and server. They're going to be built in the same file and we're going to use command line arguments to decide whether we want to run the server or the client. And after that, it shouldn't be too difficult to convert it into a peer to peer chat server. So in the last video, we created a file called chat.py. And because we're mixing the client and the server together, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the server in a class of its own. So I'm going to create a class called server and I'm going to move our socket variable in there. And then I'm going to create a constructor. I said def in it and I pass the self variable. This is just standard Python object oriented programming. And when we run the constructor, we're going to bind to the socket and we're going to start listening on that socket when we run the constructor. I'm gonna move our connections into a variable up here. So it's just gonna be connections equals an empty list. And we're gonna move the handler into the server class as well. And then after the handler, we have this while statements. So we're gonna move that into a function. The function is gonna be called run and it's gonna take self and we have to pass self to all of our functions. And when we refer to a variable that's in the class itself, such as sock or connections, we have to prepend it with self. So self.connections, self.sock and self.bind. So down here in the run function, I'm just gonna move this while loop into the run function. And we have to say self.sock.accept, self.handler because we're referring to the handler method in the class, self.connections and self.connections again. And we just need to move this up one more. And now what we want to do is instantiate our server. So we want to say server equals server. Just like that. Now we have a server object and we can say server dot run and that should run our server. So if I save that and run it, you can see we get no errors. So I'm going to assume that our server is running. So the next thing we need to do is we need to create our client, but we also need to have a way to distinguish between whether we want to be the server or we want to be the client. So to do that, I'm going to import the sys library and down here what I'm going to do is say if the length of sys.argv. So sys.argv is the command line arguments and I want to check if there is more than one command line argument because the first command line argument is always the name of the file and we're going to take the second command line argument if there is one and that's going to be the IP address we want to connect to as the client. So if there's more than one command line argument that means we want to be the client otherwise we want to be the server. I'll just put in pass for now which just allows us to have an empty if statement otherwise we're going to be the server so we're just going to move the server code into this else statement and now we're going to create the class for our clients so to do that i'm just going to create a class called a client and then we're going to create a constructor so we say def underscore underscore init underscore underscore we pass it the self variable like usual and here's where we want to connect to our socket but before we can connect to the socket we need to go up here and copy this socket because we're going to use that one for our client and then in the client we want to say self dot sock dot connect and the connection method takes a tuple the first parameter is the address and the second parameter is the port and we're going to get the address from the constructor when we actually run the client so to do that we're going to say client equals a new client object and the client is going to get its address from the second command line argument so we're just going to say sys.argv1 to get the second command line argument so if we save that this chat.py would be the first command line argument and the second command line argument would be this, which would be the IP address that we want to connect to. So next we want to do is create a method to be able to send messages to the server. So to do that, we're going to say def send message. And this method is just going to be really simple. It's going to say self.sock.send to send data via the socket. And it's going to send the bytes that we get back from the input method in Python. The built-in input method in Python it takes whatever you type in the terminal and it returns that from that function. And the bytes method, we have to tell it the encoding of the string that we want to convert into bytes. So we're going to say utf8. And then now that we can send messages, what we want to do is create a loop that will run in the client. And the loop's going to continually receive data. So it's going to be data equals self.sock.receive. And we're going to receive 1024 bytes maximum. And then like before, we're going to say if not data break. This just means the client's disconnected. But above the while loop, what we're going to do is create a new thread. And we're going to send messages via the new thread. Because our main thread is going to, be, is going to have a loop that's going to continually try to receive data. We can't receive and send at the same time. So by creating a new thread will be able to send data at the same time as receiving data. So we're going to create a new thread. The new thread is going to be called ithread for input thread and it's going to be equal to threading.thread and the target function is going to be send message and send message is no parameter so we don't need to provide any arguments. Then we're going to set ithread is going to be a daemon which means it'll close when we close the program and ithread.start to start that thread. That just means this function will be running in the background. And because it's running in the background, we wanna be able to continually ask for new input. So we're just gonna put this in a while loop. So it essentially means it'll ask for input, 
we type some input. The input method will then return and then it will send the message off to the server which will in turn send it to all of the other clients. And then what will happen is the loop will run again and it will ask for more input. And down here what we want to do is we want to print the data we get back. So we're just going to print data. And I just noticed we have a tiny mistake. You can see we're targeting send message but we actually need to refer to it as self.send message because it's part of the same class. So now if I run that server and on my local computer I have the exact same Python program so I will type in python3 chat.py and I give it the IP address of the server which in this case is 45.76.137.253. I'm going to hit enter. Now you can see I was connected to the server. You can see there's the connection behind me and now if I say hello world hit enter you can see I got this string of bytes printed back to me that means the server sent it back because the server sent back raw bytes and the way Python will try to print raw bytes is it will just print it as a string and prepend a B to the front of it you can see I have two chat windows open now I have a server in the background I have my first client and I have my second client I'm gonna hit enter now you can see the server has two connections on it and if I type in something hit enter you can see it sent it back to me but it also sent it back to the other client it is working like a chat that you would expect so before the video ends i'm just going to tidy a few things up the data we print out instead of printing out the raw bytes we're going to convert it to a string and we're going to convert it to a string with the encoding of utf8 and then back on the server what we're going to do instead of printing out self.connections we're going to print out who was connected so you can see this a variable is a tuple with the address and the port of the person who connected so we're going to say print string to convert this tuple item to a string because at the moment it's going to be an int. So we print out the string which is going to be the address. We append on a colon and we append on another string which is the port. And then we just say connected. It might not make sense now but it'll make sense in a minute. And up here you can see if not data that means the client disconnected. We're going to say self.connections.remove and we're going to remove that connection then what we're going to do is we're going to say c.close to close that connection actually before we do all that is we're just going to copy this and we're going to print out that somebody disconnected and we just have a typo here so we'll just fix that so now if i run the server you can see there's it running and now i'm going to connect to it via the client you can see it says the IP address of who was connected followed by the port that they connected on. I'm going to connect again. You can see now we have another client connected. But because you can see they're coming from the same IP address, they have different ports. So if I just type something else, you can see both clients received that message. Now if this client disconnects by killing the Python program, you can see one of the clients disconnected. And now we have one client left. And now if I disconnect from that one, you can see that that client also disconnected. So that's a really simple chat server. It's an anonymous chat server pretty much because nobody has nicknames or usernames or anything like that and you don't know who actually sent each message. So next time what we're going to do is we're going to convert it into a peer-to-peer -peer chat server. So instead of having one, one central server to process the messages, we're going to have a peer-to-peer -peer system and we're going to add special features such as nicknames and things like that to make it into an actual fully-fledged chat server. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. If you have any questions, don't forget to email me at francis at .org. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. But that's it for this video, and I'll see you next time.